Barbara Melchert, I'm from the Department of Molecular Pharmacology of the University of Groningen. Today's date is March 30th, 2020, and this is a recorded class for the course Pathology and Immunology for First-Year Pharmacy Student. I originally gave this uh, class on March 6th, and I re-recorded it for a complete set of online lectures. So this particular class is about tissue-resonant immune cells, and um, these immune cells are um, in tissues to um, be a first line of defense when um, the tissue is breached and an infection is, uh, is imminent. Uh, I'm going to talk about three types of cells, namely mast cells, macrophages and dendritic cells. So first of all, mast cells. Mast cells were discovered by Paul Ehrlich um, and he discovered them uh, because after a staining he did, he saw these large granules inside that you can see here um, and what he believed was that these granules were there to feed the surrounding tissue so that's why he called them mast cells because mast means um, to um, feed in German and in Dutch fettmesten and um, <coughs> Later they found out that these granules are actually full of histamine and heparin and induce inflammation and can kill parasites um, when they are being exocytosed, when they're being thrown out of the cells. So these um, uh, cells are really important in the defense against parasites um, and since they throw out all these granules with toxic compounds um, that induces tissue damage, so they're also important in, in helping to repair the tissue again and uh, particularly with um, help with angiogenesis, so the making of new blood vessels. So then um, macrophages and dendritic cells, um, they are very similar, they are both big eaters uh, actually, the name macrophage means macro means big and phage means eater. So they're both big eaters. Um, so they're, they're similar, but they're also very different. They have similar functions, but also different functions. And I'll discuss them uh, in more detail here. So macrophages are big eaters. They're big cells that um, phagocytose a lot of um, things that they come across. Um, and dendritic cells are also big eaters. They also eat a lot, but they look very different, right? You see uh, all these uh, protrusions here, um, and that's why they're called dendritic cells, because they have all these dendrites. So it's, they sort of look like um, um, a um, mis, uh, misformed nerve cell with all these dendrites. Um, but that is to, uh, to feel around, to make sure you eat as much as possible and you sense as much of the surroundings as you can. So uh, what are the similarities and what are the differences? Um, macrophages are a type of white blood cell um, that cleanse the body from unwanted microscopic particles as, such as bacteria, dead cells, but also inhaled particles, whereas dendritic cells are a type of antigen presenting white blood cell. And so these are really important for the presentation of antigens, and we'll talk about that more later. Uh, the main function of macrophages is to clean the body from cell debris and kill pathogens. Well, the main function of dendritic cells is to process antigens and to present it to T cells. Um, generally, macrophages are bigger than dendritic cells, uh, and macrophages do not have dendrites. And um, macrophages are in the tissue and stay in the tissue, while um, dendritic cells are first in the tissue, and when they get specific signals, they move out of the tissue to the lymph nodes to get help from T cells. So dendritic cells are mobile. They move, move to lymph nodes to get T cell help, and that is shown here. So here we have dendritic cells that are uh, in a tissue and sampling 
things that are in the tissue, so that could also be um, um, infections that enter the tissue. So when they get signals from the tissue that the tissue is infected, then these uh, dendritic cells migrate to the lymph nodes to get help from T cells. So uh, whatever they've eaten uh, together with the signals from the tissue that they get induces them to move to uh, the uh, lymph nodes through the afferent lymphatic vessels and then they look for T cell help in the lymph nodes. And what they, they'll do there is present antigen to T cells to tell the antigen what they should, uh, to tell the T cell what they should do. Um, and I have a nice movie here of, of um, a dendritic cell in an airway showing you their, their uh, behavior in, in the lung. They're really underneath the airway wall. So this is an airway. This is the airway wall. Here you see alveoli. And this green thing is a dendritic cell. And what you'll see in the movie is that they're really moving around, sniffing around, looking for stuff to eat and to see if everything is fine in the tissue. You really see it moving around and sometimes even sticking a protrusion through the epithelial layer to see if there's something here in the airspace that needs sampling. So I've been talking about phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is basically is eating and it's eating to destroy or to present. In the case of macrophages, it's to destroy mostly, and in the case of dendritic cells, it's to present antigen to T cells and to get T cell help. Uh, how did that work? And does that work? It's um, uh, dendritic cells and macrophages have receptors on their cell surface that can recognize specific. Um, patterns on pathogens. So when a pathogen binds to one of those pattern recognition receptors, PRR, then um, the uh, cell membrane of uh, the cell will uh, try to engulf the, the pathogen. And um, that engulfment leads to the formation of a vesicle, which is called a phagosome. And this phagosome will fuse with the lysosome. The lysosome contains digestive enzymes and oxidants. And when these two fuse, it means that the um, uh, pathogen will be uh, digested and degraded and attacked by uh, uh, oxidants. And these antigenic fragments uh, will either be reused or in case of uh, uh, of uh, T cell help presented to the T cells. So how do uh, macrophages know what to eat? Well, they have these uh, pattern recognition receptors and here's the pathogen with the, uh, the patterns that are being recognized. So when the pathogen binds, you get uh, a clustering of the receptors and that clustering induces an activation of uh, the cytoskeleton within the cell and then makes the cell move around the um, pathogen with the uh, clustered receptors. So phagocytosis receptors that recognize specific patterns, so pattern recognition receptors are um, uh, complement protein receptors. So when something is coated with complement, it can be recognized by complement receptors uh, and then taken up. But also specific microbial components uh, like uh, manosylated proteins or other carbohydrates that are present on uh, microorganisms can be recognized by mannose receptors that are present on macrophages and dendritic cells. Uh, antibodies can be recognized uh, through FC receptors. FC receptors recognize the tail of an antibody. So when something is coated with antibodies, 
FC receptors get clustered and will induce phagocytosis. Um, but there are also other cell components uh, that are recognized, also uh, components from your own body that are recognized by dendritic cells and uh, macrophages that can lead to phagocytosis of, um, of those uh, components. Here there's a, a summary of uh, the different types of receptors that are used uh, for phagocytosis and what they look like. Uh, a f current research topic in my lab is um, uh, the um, topic of microplastics in the lung. Um, of course, you've all heard about the plastic problem in the oceans. Well, it's not just a problem in the oceans because these plastics degrade and become really small. And they become microplastics and they're not only present in water, but they're also in the air. For instance, the clothes we wear nowadays are made of polyester and nylon and all these artificial fibers that are basically plastic and they shed fibers and these are present in the air and those microplastics um, you can breathe in. So these particles and the fibers are things that are also recognized by uh, macrophages and dendritic cells and can be taken up by these cells. For instance here um, you can see a picture that we made of macrophages. So these are macrophages uh, the blue thing is a nucleus and the green stuff around it is the cytoplasm. And when, and this is a uh, microplastic fiber. This is a macrophage that, ha that has eaten such a microplastic fiber and you can see it increases enormously in size to accommodate this huge fiber. And here's a movie of macrophages that are trying to eat um, these uh, fibers. So the fibers are red here and these are the macrophages and you can see that they're, they really want to do something with these fibers. As you can see they're sniffing around and sometimes they even appear to be fighting over a fiber and trying to eat it. And this is uh, around uh, 980 minutes and if you leave them longer they can actually eat the fibers as well. So what is the goal of phagocytosis? It's to clear debris, cell debris and to clear pathogens. And then when they've eaten uh, the pathogens is to kill the pathogens. Um, and why would you uh, eat all those pathogens? Because you want to warn your, neighboring, your neighbors that there is imminent danger. Um, so by eating the danger, you can um, start up a response to tell others that they should be careful. So uh, macrophages tell their neighboring cells that they should be on the lookout and dendritic cells go to the lymph node to involve the help of uh, T cells. So process, uh, material process to antigens by dendritic cells can be presented uh, to T cells uh, in the lymph nodes and the macrophages can do a similar thing uh, to T cells that have traveled to the tissue. 